people before me have um, been through it and avoided it and stuff. And so I've never done it. I've never made a bowl of cookie dough. But have you ever said that phrase where you say, you know, when I grow up, I'm going to like or something different from my parents? It's because all of us, when we're under authority, we have this desire to get out of authority, to get free, to get on our own so that we can make our own choices, do our own things. And our country is exactly that too. I mean, it was founded on a statement that says we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. And before that, in the early part of the Declaration of Independence, it says when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one group of people, I'm paraphrasing now, for one group of people to say no to those that are in authority over them, then the rest of the state comes, the war comes, and we revolt and we win and we move on and we become this amazing thing. But we are based on a system that says, when oppressed, break free. It's in our soul. And it's sin. It's called rebellion. See, God is our ultimate authority. And we can perceive him working in our lives in a way that feels like oppression. But he wants us to submit and trust and walk with him. Now, this is difficult for our society. It's, it's hard because there are big questions that we have to deal with. Did I just lose this? There are big questions that we have to deal with. And uh, one of the questions that we have to deal with is what about cases of abuse or when something inappropriate is happening? Let me just say this. If you are under the authority of someone else, God wants you to submit as long as you can do so to honor him, number one. God also will hold you responsible for whatever level of authority you have. Quick example. The husband is beating the children. What should the wife do? The wife has authority to protect herself and to protect her children. It's her responsibility to exercise her authority to get those kids to a safe place get herself to a safe place. Is divorce what she should do? The Bible doesn't give us a clear answer on that. It's kind of up to her. It's up to him. But she needs to get away. You follow me? I'm not saying that women need to be subservient. I'm not saying that children need to let their parents walk all over them. I'm saying there is some type of Christ-like honor in submission. But the greater responsibility is on those who have authority to exercise that authority in a loving manner. I want to challenge you to think about where you are in this process. Where do you have authority and where don't you have authority? Ask yourself this question. Circle it on your page. I am a master, a slave, a parent, a child, a husband, or a wife. Circle the ones that are true for you. And then take just a moment to reflect in your heart, what is God calling me to do? I don't have anywhere near enough time to go through the details of the practicalities of some of the interpersonal relationships of bosses and employees. And especially today, I don't have the time to go through all the details of husband and wife interactions. And so I encourage you, if there's something in here that I've said that's offended you or that you're not sure about, please just talk with me. Let's sit down and look across the Bible at each other and uh, have a discussion about what maybe this actually means. But I believe Paul is calling us to something deep that our culture can't touch. That perhaps if we were to grasp this, we might be able to recognize something deeper in ourselves. But the bottom line is simply this. That if you can imitate Jesus, wherever you are, you know you're deep. That's the first thing. Now, I've, I had to take this long detour to go through this kind of difficult topic. And uh, we might deal with it in full some other time. But the rest of this passage is easy. It's fast. We're going to handle it quickly. So let's keep reading, okay? We're going to move on. And we're going to look at the rest of these verses here. So would you flip your page over? And here is the next blank you can fill in. The first one was imitating Jesus. The second one, you know you're deep if you can pray with thankfulness for God's work. 
You know you're deep if you can pray with thankfulness for God's work. Look with me at these verses. Verse 2, chapter 4. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And pray for us, too, that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I'm in chains. Now, hang on there. Paul just, in a few short words, said a lot that can just blow right past us. He said, for which... I'm in chains. So far in this book, we haven't heard Paul talk about the fact that he's in prison. The fact that he's actually in jail as a result of his proclamation of Jesus Christ. And now he says, I'm in chains. And what does he want them to pray about? Does he want them to pray that he gets free? Does he want them to pray that his life is spared? What does he want them to pray about? No, he wants them to pray that God would open a door for the message to go out. You see, Paul is in this place where he can say, you know what? It doesn't matter what's happening to me. What's most important is what God wants to do. And God wants other people to hear this message. And so he says, pray that the door would be opened for this message. Friends, I don't know what you're dealing with today. I, I don't know the, the specific details. I know what our country is dealing with. We've got financial collapse. We've got uh, presidential candidates threatening all kinds of evil so that we vote for the one who's, who scares us the most. We've got uh, the media out there telling us that all kinds of bad stuff is happening. And, and it's like the world feels like it's crushing in on us and that our lives are kind of on the edge. But frankly, listen, you know you're deep with God if you can pray with thankfulness that God's work gets done. It takes a level of depth to get there. But if you can get there, you'll know that he's ultimately in charge. Pray for his work to get done. And here's this last piece that Paul says. He says in verse 4, Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. You know you're deep if you can make the most of every opportunity. If you live a life that imitates Jesus, if you pray and ask for God to open doors, 